a soft skill attached with your whatever skill or whatever degree you're acquiring spot people for their companies do you think you're selling yourself good the degree that you have the knowledge that you have is going to give you confidence speaking is alone in the soft skill you have to be an active listener 38 percent of the impression we make on people is through our tone Avaaz nikalo, hey, hey. Nobody has time for that. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. How are you all? And that's a very low high end. Wa alaikum aslam. Can I have it a little louder? Thank you very much. My name is Mehvi Sultana, and today I'm going to talk about communication. Okay? You all are planning to become engineers. Is that correct? Most of you. And as we were just discussing, you all said that the field of IT is booming. And if you want to be successful in the market, and if you want to earn good money, if you want to be part of the global market from anywhere, you know, whether you're sitting in Lahore or Chichuki Malion or Kasur or Canada, you can be, you know, you can work for any country from anywhere. Is that correct? Yes. Great. So having said this all, do you think that the skills of engineering are enough for you to excel yourself in the market, to sell yourself to the global market. How many, of, how many of you say yes to that? A show of hands can work. I can't see your show of hand. Acha. So only two people or three people showed their hands. Is there a reason? What is the reason? So you, you need to have a soft skill attached with your whatever skill or whatever degree you're acquiring. So why is communication important? Can anybody tell me? Why do you think communication skill, soft skill, is important? Anyone? Exchange ideas. Exchange ideas. To exchange ideas and? I hope you all have done your breakfast. Well, not that I'm going to offer, I just asked. <laughs> you can offer me. Yes. Why are communication skills important beside the degree you're acquiring? We need to know that. We need to know that. Why? <clears throat> having a degree, having an expanded, concrete, profound knowledge of the field that you are getting into is a need or a desire? Need, desire, demand, kya hai ye? Ye aapki basic zarurat hai, aapki khahish hai? I can't hear you. Basic need is. This is your basic need. Because you have to survive. You have to take care of your families. If you don't have a day, then how would you make both ends meet? You make both ends meet right? So you, to make both ends meet, you have to have something in your hands, something solid, something extra, so that you are in a position to earn money and serve not just yourself, but then your family, and eventually country and the whole world. Be a productive part of the world. Now, having the soft skill of communication, Urdu ho, English ho, Punjabi ho, Pashto ho, koi bhi language ho, uske andar achhi tarah se communicate karne ki ability, aapki khahish hai, aapki zarurat hai. Absolutely. It is a must. So let's just, I'm very sorry, I'm going to quote your example. Look at your participation. Is it good enough? If, if we have employers sitting here, if we have people from different companies who are here to see the talent, spot people for their companies, do you think you're selling yourself good? No, no. Not at all. Do you have to sell yourself? Yes. yes, because the competition, sweetie, is cutthroat. Whether you are a doctor, engineer, whatever field you have chosen for yourself, Great, excel in that, do your best, be at your best. But 
that degree alone is not going to help you. You have to have a solid command over the communication skills also. Now, why? Communication is a soft skill. A lot of people believe it's a fluff, it's not needed, but it is. And yes, I remember where I was. I was giving you your example, that if there is an employer here, you won't be chosen, I'm really sorry. Because you have to have that charisma, that spark, that enthusiasm, that energy to show that you're going to be a productive part of that company, right? Which I'm very sorry is a bit lacking at the moment. You need to bring that in. The degree that you have, the knowledge that you have is going to give you confidence. Aapko pata hai ki aapke dimaag mein sara knowledge hai. Aapko pata hai ki aapne kya padha hai. Aur aapne kaise cheez ko handle karna hai. Lekin agar aap se kisi ne communicate karna hai. And now because the market is becoming international. Jaise meinne pehle kaha, aap kasoor mein ya kisi gaon mein, kisi kaspe mein, kisi town mein kahin bhi bethe hai. You can serve any international client. Now, to talk to the international client, you have to know their language. You have to know their body language. You have to know their do's and don'ts, how to keep eye contact, how to keep them engaged. And this all comes under the big umbrella of communication, communication skills. So communication skill, my dears, it is not a fluff at all. It is essential, it is pertinent for all of us to have. And as people said here, what is communication? The concept of communication is? Exchange of ideas to communicate, right? Now let's see if this machine works. So this kind of communication is what we are having at the moment. This is me. This is you all. That's, what I, that's how I take it, I'm sorry to say, but this is how, for me it is, that everybody is. <laughs> so, but this is how it should be. And this is a two-way communication process. And if you're not doing it with your client, just consider yourself the ambassador of a global market, of an international market, wherever you're sitting. So, if this doesn't happen, you won't sell yourself. You won't sell your degree. You won't get, or you won't have an edge over others. That's what you need to have. So, when we talk about communication skills, we are talking about speaking, and we are talking about being an active listener. And when you're saying, when you say that you're an active listener, so when I look at somebody, they nod. It is very important for international clients and for people here, a person like me, I'm not a foreigner, of course, but if I'm talking about someone and he's not filling his mouth, he's not filling his mouth, it doesn't work for me. I don't want to talk to a wall or to a dummy. I want to talk to a human being, somebody who responds, who tells me, shows me a gesture, uh-huh, right, oh. So this is what I need. And if you can't say it with the help of words, your eyes should tell me that you're listening. Give me a nod, give me a smile, lean back, lean forward, but show me some movement. I know that you're alive, right? And when we talk about, so speaking is alone in this soft skill. You have to be an active listener because aapne sahi suna hai, तो ही तो आप सही रिस्पॉन्ड कर पाएंगे ना अगर आपने सही सुना नहीं है तो आप मेरे गंदम का जवाब चावल से देंगे यूजिंग नॉन वर्बल क्यूज गार एड सो ऑल ऑफ दीज नॉन वर्बल क्यूज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दे इंक्लूड योर फेशियल जेस्टर्स दे इंक्लूड हाउ यू स्टैंड दे इंक्लूड योर बॉडी लैंग्वेज वील टॉक मोर अबाउट इट एंड टोन ऑफ वॉइस ओ माई गॉड हाउ इंपॉर्टेंट इट इज how important it is. Now let's talk about tone of voice first of all. Great job. Does it sound I'm appreciating somebody? <laughs> great job. I am saying great job. So does it sound I'm appreciating somebody? Yes. No. Great job. Good. Does it sound like I'm, I'm appreciating somebody? Yes. yes. Your tone changes the whole 
meaning, the complete meaning. So the way you say things, it absolutely matters a lot. 38% of the impression we make on people is through our tone. So we can convey a very wrong message to people when we say things in the wrong tone. For example, you, 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 just the change of tone, you, 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 makes a hell lot of a difference. So now it's just a word, you, but when you are at a working place, when you're in a company, your tone makes a whole lot of a difference because what will happen with you? You talk to your colleagues, you talk to your team leads, you talk to your management head. And people will say, what did he talk about? What did he say? What was he trying to say actually? So when we incorporate our regular routine in the workplace, it doesn't work. So you have to be very uh, careful, mindful of your tone. The ultimate goal of communication, transfer information or ideas in a clear, concise and meaningful way. We have talked about it. When you're communicating with people, sometimes we do or per give a lot of auditory clutter. Do you know what is a clutter? Do you know what is a clutter? Mess. If you have all your clothes on the that's a clutter. If you have a camera, that's a clutter. So anything that you have is a clutter. When we are communicating with people, sometimes consciously or unconsciously, we add auditory clutter in our communication. Now, what is auditory clutter? There are two types of auditory clutter. Audit is from listening, right? So audio, audit. Auditory clutter, the non-words. I'm going to say a few things and I'm going to add auditory clutter in it. So, uh, mm, I, I went there uh, and um, it, was, uh, it was good. I, I, I liked it. So these ahs and ums and ehs, this is auditory clutter. Do you like it? No, because you lose interest, number one. You think, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She's not sure herself. Right? So you lose credibility when you have auditory clutter in shape of non-words in your communication. Then we have auditory clutter in shape of words also. A lot of people would be like, you know, they like to say a lot of like, and because they like to say a lot of like, so after every few words, they like to like, say like. And a kind of, you know, like a kind of uh, a thing is in me, like a kind of, uh, kind of, kind of, kind of. And then people have auditory clutter like, you know, I went to there, I, I went to that place, you know, it was really good. You know, you know, you know. So there are, you might, uh, ha, do you know what auditory clutter in shape of words do you, you use? You need to find that out. How are you going to find it out? Because I'm unconsciously bowling. So you're going to choose a topic randomly. Do it for three to four days. Choose a topic, just say a few lines, record your voice, listen to yourself. You would know how many auditory clutters in shape of non-words and in shape of words do you have. But you need to know that. Do you think I have any word that I tend to repeat time and again? No. Not because I was born with it, because I worked on it. I recorded myself, I listened to myself, and I realized, oh, I say a lot of, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So I need to get rid of that. So I identified my weaknesses, and I worked on them, and I eliminated them. And that's how you sound credible. You sound trustworthy and you get this profound, you know, uh, meaning in your message. So, the non-words, ah, uh, um, er, ah, uh, well, well, kind of, like, you know, get rid of these. It is called auditory clutter. Another thing which is very important, when you're talking to people, you have to see if you're able to project your voice or not. Now, you're not going to yell. Am I yelling at the moment? Yes. Because I want to make sure that I reach you. Am I yelling? Yes. 
Yes, I am. I'm not projecting my voice, I'm yelling. But now, because I want to reach the last person and I want to make sure he listens and pays attention, I am speaking up, right? My volume, I have enhanced it. But am I yelling? No, I'm not yelling. So that's what you need to do. But if you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation, that tone would not help. Then I need to bring it down. If I'm talking to this much of a crowd, my volume would be different. So be as big as the room. Be as big as the room. It is very important. Now, by birth, a lot of people have meek, weak, low voices. You have to work on that. And there are breathing exercises that you can do to enhance your voice quality and your voice projection. But trust me, if you're talking to a client, because we, we deal with international clients, so that's why I'm telling you, you're talking to a client and you don't sound well, uh -uh. people don't want to talk then. Okay? If you effort, uh -huh. Bolo. Don't, nahi. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't help. People don't want it. They don't have market me. Time nahi hai logon ke paas ki wo wait kare ki aap bolenge. Uncha bolo. Awaz nikalo. Hain, hain. Nobody has time for that. You speak up. You convey your message there and then, clear and precise. No auditory clutter. You sell yourself. Fire your current client ko. Theek hai? So it's very important. So volume matters, speak up. Make sure that you do not have any auditory clutter in your speech. Today and today onwards, for at least a few days, pick any topic, pankha. Say a few lines on fan, say a few lines on whiteboard, say a few lines on internet, say a few lines on yourself. At least 10 lines in a flow. Record, listen back. You will get to know your auditory clutter. And trust me, we all have auditory clutter. Tika? There are two types of sufferings. Ek suffering ye hai, jo mene aapko abhi batai hai. Ki aap ghar jayenge, pancha din aapne taklif uthani hai. Mobile uthane ki taklif. Record ka button dabane ki taklif aur paanche jumle bolne ki taklif. Ideas ko gather karne ki taklif. Theek hai? So this is a kind of suffering. Oh God, I have to do something now. It's not, ek to celibus ki padhai upar se ye, upar se ammi ka dahi le ke aana hai. So there are too much, there's too much to do, too many errands to run. So ye aap suffering karein. So that's one type of suffering. Aur aapko pata lag jai ki aapke auditory clutter kya hai aur uske baad aap uski phir dousri suffering kya hai, phir mehnat karein uske upar. Agli dafa phir record karein daz din ke baad. Phir dekhe, nahi yaar, mein toh like, like, like keh raha hoon. Phir record karein, phir khatam karein. Kisi ko sunayin ke, mein ne kitni dafa kaha hai, aapko sunne mein kaisa lag raha hai. So yeh sari bhoat taklif de chiz hai, hai na? Lekin, hum isko avoid kar sakte hai. Kyunki ek aur tarah ki suffering bhi hai. Aur woh yeh hai, ki mein aapko audience ke saamne bulaun, aur aap na bol paayin. Aur aap unke saamne, ek speech de, full of auditory clutter. And you're embarrassed. This is also a suffering. So which suffering is better? The first one. So let's go for the first one. You don't want to go through the second suffering. Choose your suffering. You have to come to the market. You have to work with the employer and client. Okay? So either you have to suffer now, you have to practice, improve your communication skills. Work on that. Get hold of your weaknesses. Eliminate them. Or then, go to the market, launch yourself, and be embarrassed by suffering. The choice is yours. Okay? Besides having the auditory clutter, we have visual clutter as well. Now, auditory is with audio. Visual is from video. Very right. Now, when I'm talking to you, now because people are very loud, so it means that I'm doing a very loud body language so that you all listen to me. Is that good? No, I'm not a clown. I'm flailing like a windmill on steroids or a caffeinated tiger. You don't want that. You want to look active. You want to look energetic. But 
This is a clutter. That's too much body language. So how many of you, a show of hands, think that you do not have a good body language or you do not know what is a balanced body language? A show of hands, please. because they think they have good body language. So we'll invite them and check. Okay. Now, I'm gonna tell you three things. If you think that you do not have a balanced body language, there are a few things that you need to understand. So, look at my statement. The first one. A lot of people talk. I don't know if you can see me, but I have one foot raised. A lot of people talk like this. Have you seen people talking like this? Look at my feet. And when they talk like this, they tend to do like this. This is a distraction. This is bad body language. A lot of people talk like this. Okay, up and down. Because the heels up here, wrong. A lot of people put their hand here when they want to talk and then they forget ke bazu hilane the and then all the body language come from their hip. Yaldi aajana. Nay, aisa nahi hone wala. So we are talking about the management policies. Theek hai? So this is a bad body language. So please don't put your hands here on your hip, on your waist because sari body language pe yahan se aayegi. A lot of men put their hands in their pocket executive style, or uske baad they become a chicken. So the management has said this thing, and we are going to apply these or policies, but I don't know if it's gonna happen or not, so let's see. So yeah, so this is a chicken movement, don't do that. Or one hand in the pocket and the other one outside, because you keep, you'll keep bobbing your shoulder, and also you'll become a chicken. The other is that people put their hands in, the t in their pocket and then they tap their fingers. And that's also a very negative sign. That's cunning, okay? So don't do that. When you want to stand in front of people, when you want to talk to them, if you're standing, have a solid ground on, uh, with the help of your feet, legs a little apart, and then move your arms. Now there are three kinds of movements that you can begin with. One of them is give. There are three. Give, show, chop. Give, show, chop. chop. Now what is give? So today, as we have ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about this topic. Now please remember that this topic, so it's like I'm giving something. Palms up, not like this, palms up. And this is a give body movement. Got it? Then we have the show, where you act. So listen carefully. To see the weight of this thing. It's heavy, right? So we're gonna talk about this big company today. So what am I doing? I'm giving you some concept, visual idea of what I'm saying. So number one, number two. So can we do it again? Let's do it again, right? So these are all show uh, movements of body language. And then we have chop when something, number one, you're negating some, something. Number two, when you want to be more, you want to put more emphasis on something. So first of all, this, and then this. Chop can be with one hand, it can be with both hands, it can be used to negate something. No way we are doing it. So that's chop. That's give. Right? And this is show. We are going to do that. Please get this thing in your head. It should be very clear to you. Okay? And then sky is the limit. In speeches and debates, because you're all our students, I'm sure you must be aware of, and you must be using all of it, but now you know it's give, show, and chop. And these are very important, very, very important for you to understand. Um, I'm going to now ask a few people from you to come here. And we are going to make sure that we don't do all of these things, okay? And we avoid the auditory clutter, 
the visual clutter, we give the give, show, chop, body language. And also, the last thing, when you come here and you start talking on something, now this is very important, and I want you to listen to it. If you do not come up with body language, that is a monotonous body language. Let me give you a show of a body language which is monotonous, that I don't move my arms and I just keep talking to you. So it, you will get lesser interested in my speech. And ultimately, my tone will also become monotonous. But when I use my body language, my stress patterns increase, your interest level increase, because I look at you and bring back your attention towards me, right? So a monotonous body language would lead to a monotonous tone. So you should not have a monotonous body language so that you can have variation in your tone. Another thing that you can do to bring variation is when you're about to say something important, pause. What you say later on should come slowly stressed and then you go again and say something which is not really important but then you insert a pause and what comes later comes out slowly with stress what do you have now you have variation in the tone and also you know how to engage people anything which is important before you say that thing what do you do you give a pause and what comes after pause comes slowly. And then you do emphasize and stress. So when I call people here, I'm going to check you on a few things. Number one, if you have variation of tone, okay, variation in your tone, bring variety in your tone. And I've told you, pauses at the right places. And then, what else? Slow and stress. And then say that thing, the next sentence can come quickly so that people know it's not really important. And then again, okay? Also, I'm gonna check if you are coming up with a balanced body language, if there is any clutter of audio in your tone and voice. So should we start? Can I have all those people who did not Give me a show of hands when I said weak body language. Can anybody come? We need a volunteer here. Good, can we have a clap of hands? Brilliant. That's the spirit, sweetie. You, uh, any topic of your choice. Let me introduce myself. Okay, okay. So, so. My go name is Umawa Fatima. I did my BBA honors from Ikra University, Karachi. We came here recently in uh, last February 2022. That's it. Okay, that is the spirit, darling. Very good. But I would like you to be here for a minute. Now, what you did on your heels, you were like this. All right? So, yes. So, no, but we are not going to do that. So, what you need to do is you're going to grip the ground. So, just legs a little apart. Do it. Yeah. Yes. Now you won't do anything. And now talk to people. Okay? Hello. So yeah. And mm -hmm. body language here does not help. So just imagine if I'm standing here and whatever body language I do, can you see it? So it has to be aligned with my shoulders. It has to be here. Okay? Doesn't matter what your height is, where you're standing, behind the podium, front of the podium, doesn't matter, even if you're sitting, but the body language has to be aligned with your shoulders and not here, okay? So can we have a go in a, uh, one more time? Hold, yes. You will feel strength coming from the ground. Yep. Hi, this is Umama. I am from Ikra University. I did my BBA from Ikra University, Karachi. I recently shifted here from Karachi and uh, in February 2022. Great, thank you very much. Yes. A round of applause for her. Great job. 
somebody from here now. Quickly, people. Give it a shot. Come. First of all, I would like to thank ma'am for inviting me. My name is Fezan and I am doing BSCS from the University of Lahore. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Was he yelling? No, it was a very nice up volume, right? So, so that he, because he was trying to project his voice. Now, he, I'm gonna call him again. The mistake he did, that, so for example, that, you know, your communication starts before it actually starts. So when I call somebody, or you were called upon a stay, you know, so you stand up. So people, that's what we're gonna talk about. And why are we gonna talk about it? Because it's important and I've been asked to do so. So when you are invited, come, stand, have a look at the people, smile. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Mevis Sultana, and today we are going to talk about communication. I hope you're ready. See the difference? It gives you more confidence when you come, you take the grip off the ground, and this would help you. And then you look at the people, you give them a smile, and then you begin. Okay? So, oh! <laughs> Client, you have a job, you don't need a job. I don't need a job. You don't need a job, what do you do? We will do online. We will do online and we will not talk to Okay, great. That's a good excuse. Anybody now want somebody from, from here? Please, please, please. Was there any auditory clutter in her? No. Visual clutter? No. There as well? No. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. I hope all of you are fine. My name is Duhamidhi and I have done my BSc from Spirit University Lahore and nowadays uh, I study web development from PNW. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, the gentleman came, got hold of his ground, looked at you people, and then started. And it gives you confidence, right? Because you get time to breathe, to tell yourself that you're good. People at the end, do we have somebody who's coming? No one? Please, come. And just say a few more lines, okay? When you go home and you record your voice, people at the end, when you go home and record your voice, speak for at least two minutes. Then you will come to know your auditory clutter. Two or three sentences would not help you, okay? G. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, first of all, my name is Tayyib Ali and uh, I thankful uh, uh, Kasim, Kasim Ali Foundation for invite me a motivation lecture and... Uh... That's great, thank you very much. Just stay here for a while. Please come here, come, to hello. <laughs> Doesn't matter. So, now there was a visual clutter. Can anybody tell me? Konsawala. Yes, this was a visual clutter, right? Does it disturb? Number one, this way of standing does not give you confidence and people would not take you seriously, okay? So now let's stand like this. And here, right? Again. <laughs> I'm standing differently. Oh, because of my skirt, yeah, okay, good. Can we have it one more time? Assalamu alaikum everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do? Now this is what you do as a beginner, but later on, don't do it. Because this looks sneaky, doesn't it? So, but in the beginning, just to remind you that there is no body language here, put your hands here, then talk and move. But once you have mastered the art of body language, then your hand shouldn't be here, then they can be here. 
okay? When you put your weight on one side on the hip, then people don't take you, you know, seriously. It's not formal, okay? Start, hands here. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Tayyabari and I am a second year student. I am from Lahore and first of all, I am thank you Kasim Ali Foundation for inviting me motivation lecture. Thank you very much. The way you stand, the way you present yourself to people makes a whole lot of a difference, gives you confidence, makes people attentive and serious towards you, okay? So how you want people to take you, that's how you come, don't start right away, take your time and then start speaking. Last but not the least, and the most important thing, there are three types of tones in our English language or Urdu language, any language, any language at all. There are three types of tones. How many types? Yes. Which body movement is this? Show. Show. Show, great. The first one is the monotonous tone. It's called the monotonous inflection. When we speak in monotonous inflection, inflection, there is no tone at all. It goes straight like I'm talking at the moment. And if I keep going on in the same tone, you would certainly sleep right after a few minutes. Okay? So avoid this tone. Now listen to me. Hi, my name is Mavish. I'm a trainer. I love what I do. And I am here to talk about communication. What is happening? All of my sentences are ending at a higher tone. Listen. Hi, my name is Mevish. I'm a trainer. I am here to talk about communication. It's like I'm not telling, but I'm asking. I'm not sure, I'm not certain. And then if I'm not sure, why would you believe me? Why would you listen to me? I'm not telling you something. Now listen to this. I'm going to move this upward tone downward. I'm going to bring a downward inflection in my tone. And you would see a sudden change of weight in what I say. Hello, my name is Mevish. My name is Mevish. My name is Mevish. By profession, I'm a trainer. Today, we are going to talk about communication. I hope you're ready. This is a question, that's why upward tone. And in the rest of the sentences, where was my tone? Downward. People somehow now frequently talk in an upward inflection. And upward inflection means there is no certainty. You're not sure what you're saying. And that's why you lose credibility, you lose power, you lose authority. If you're telling somebody and you want them to be uh, convinced, you want to compel them, you want to persuade them on something, avoid the upward inflection. The sentences should not go up towards the end. Let me give you a few more examples. Yesterday, I was going to the market and I saw a lot of people. They were yelling. I don't know why. Is it going up? So yesterday, I was in the market and I saw a lot of people chatting. I don't know what happened there. I have no idea. Do you see the difference? It suddenly brings in trust, a bit of domination, a bit of authority and credibility to the message that you're trying to convey. Nobody is going to believe you if you have an upward inflection in your tone. Now, I want one more person to please come forward and talk about himself, herself, PNY, or anything. You're going to the loo or you're coming for that stage? Oh, please. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Did he start right away? No. Yes. Time lena apne. Five seconds. They are here for you, they are your listeners, and they should wait for you. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My name is Abdul Rahman. 
I am studying in first year in Punjab College. I have skipped my college today for this session. And I hope it will be worth it. And uh, I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> uh, I am uh, doing web development in PNY. Uh, I am doing a front end uh, course from PNY. And I am doing it with uh, hard work. I uh, hope it will be worth it for me. Inshallah ta'ala. Okay, just stay here for a minute. G. So he came, he stood, he looked at you, then he started. The start was good or bad? It was good. It was good, much better. But then, that's what I was telling you. As he moved forward, the voice became shaky. The energy level became, you know, went yeah. down. So when you go home and you plan to record your voice for, you know, for, uh, to check your auditory clutter and your visual clutter, it should be for at least three to four, three to four minutes. Because then you'll come out of your comfort zone and then you will face the problems. So if you just say one or two lines, they might be very good. You won't be able to judge yourself on that. Say at least 10 to 15 lines and then listen to yourself again. So why, why people get a shaky voice? Because you're not taking strength from the mother earth. It is there to support you. It is just like ac any action has, a, has an equal reaction. reaction. So you put your weight on this ground. You grab more, you know, cover more ground under your feet and you feel strength. You will feel that the earth is supporting you. You will feel that vibe in you. That is why a lot of speakers, singers sing like this. They open their legs because they want to gain confidence. When you shift your weight to one leg, the blood circulation, it gets disturbed and you don't gain confidence then, okay? So the very first thing you need to do is gain confidence from your mother earth, okay? So you need to cover a bit of ground. And then if your body language is not confident, is lousy, you're slouching, you will lose the confidence. To tell yourself that you're confident, shoulders straight as somebody is, you know, so now So chin up. And even if you have nothing to say, just look confident. Your body language should be firm. Tone, I noticed, was not upward. Very good. I noticed the way you were talking, it was downward. The only thing is don't shift your weight as you did. Don't put your hands here. Hands should be here. This all tells you you're doing good. Good job. Thank you very much. Do we have any question? Do we have any question? No, then we're going to wrap it up very quickly. Please remember that when you speak, first thing, you need to have a good command over this soft skill, which is called? Is it a fluff or an essential skill? Essential, essential skill. Why? Where are you entering? International market. You're entering in an international market, even if you're a housewife. You can be an employee of the international market. Why? Because we have internet. Everybody has internet. So what do you need? You don't need a desk or a chair. You just need your lap, a mobile or a laptop and internet. No furniture is required. Zameen pe bethe, lap pe laptop rakhe, internet on kare, serve and earn money in dollars, pounds, Pakistani rupees, whatever your goal is, right? So the last thing, how many clutters do we have in our communication? Number one. So how would you check yourself on the audio clutter? Record yourself. Once you have mastered that, you have eliminated all your problems, then stand in front of a mirror, talk, and see if your body language is too loud or too low. All right, so when we speak to people and we want to sound 
authoritative. We want to sound confident. We want to sound we know what we are saying. And I am not uncertain. How should be our tone? Mm -mm. Downward. Yes, that's the tone you need to have. Okay? So these are just a few things in the realm of communication skills that you need to remember. Of course, project your voice. Don't yell, but speak up. Because if you're not speaking very loudly, it seems as you're not confident. So your voice plays an important role, okay? It tells how confident you are, how sure you are, how certain you are, and how well you know what you're saying. And also, please, never be speedy. Don't rush. Never ever rush. When you speak flu you know, speedily, your voice becomes shrill, also, nobody would understand, it's least impressive. Am I too fast? No. Am I too slow? No. no, because that's the speed, a normal speed. People understand, they can digest, and they can move with me. And that's what you need to bring. Clarity, am I clear? Yes. Am I pronouncing my words clearly? Yes. Right? So I'm giving respect to every alphabet in, in every word. And that's what you need to do. Your words should not run into each other. Have a little space between your words. Every word should be pronounced clearly. You look ugly, by the way, when you speak like that, particularly when the pictures would come out, you would see horrible pictures of me. But well, doesn't matter because you are able to yeah. understand what I'm saying. So your speed and the clarity of your speech matters a lot. Please work on your communication skills. You still have time, not much, but you still have time. You're about to enter in the market. The competition is tough. I wish you best of whatever you do. More power to you all. Break a leg in your education and in the market as well. Thank you very much and have a great day ahead. Alafiz.